All right, we are back. Florida Atlantic University Owls going to be taking on Rucker University Scarlet Knights here at the NCPA College Championships. I'm Maddie Marshall with Todd Martinez and Laura McKeeman from Lakeland, Florida. And the clouds are still above us, and we are about to watch the first point. Rutgers. Todd, what do you think about that breakout? Rutgers. They came hard up the middle and then cut across to the tall temple in the yellow zone on the snake side, but he went there to lock off the Dorito side, immediately starts looking that way, he's looking for kills. FAU lost one body on the break, but they go up into that uh, Dorito one, no problem. Yeah, Edford coming off early for FAU, and they have a little bit of ground. They're in the yellow zone over on the Dorito side of the field. Well, Lee, Lee ran there for Rutgers to go lock that side of the field off and then apparently didn't even see the player run to the Dorito 2. Got smoke square in the face, but then FAU just lost that player right now. And now Madrid moving in that center. He was a standout player for them last year for FAU. And Madrid on your screen right now for FAU in the center. He's, gonna, he's trying to, anytime you see a guy's body language like that, like you're, a player's body language always, you, always tells you what they're thinking. And he looked a little confused at that particular point right there. You can still see he's trying, he's talking to his coach, trying to figure out exactly where he needs to go and what he needs to do. Yeah, Madrid realizing that he needs to get a little bit of spacing. It's a two on two. He bumps all the way back across and he's now in the tall temple here on the snake side. There was a really smart move by Madrid actually to listen to his coach and figure out he needed to spread the field, Todd. Yeah, because the guy that's uh, in the yellow zone for FAU on Rutgers side of the field is putting all sorts of pressure. And I think he put a ball. Yep, there goes that Rutgers player in the snake side temple. He's walking off. And it's going to be the last Rutgers player in the back center waving for dear life. Got to get out. Madrid gets the flag to go walk it in. Going to get a check and get that flag hung. Nice job by Madrid. That was a really smart point from him. You know, he was stuck in that center, but you could see it. That kind of confusing body language moment where he's like, okay, where, what the hell am I supposed to be doing? And he very quickly assessed the situation. He listened to his coach. He was able to spread the field because it was a two-on-two -two situation and you do not want to bunch your guys up together. You don't want to be right next to your boy when it's a two-on-two. -two. You want to spread that field so you can get those angles that we talk about. You know, you're looking at that field on your screen right now in case you're just tuning in. The score, one to zero. Rutgers playing Florida Atlantic and on the strong play of Madrid, Florida Atlantic able to take that first point. But the way that this field is laid out, you're looking at that red zone and the yellow zone and the blue zone. You know, these, these teams that have been losing have been getting stuck in the backfield, and the teams that are winning are playing that center really well, and they're also able to effectively get up the snake side and the Dorito side of the field. Yeah, I mean, you saw Rutgers try and make that big move up the middle, but they came to the snake side to attempt to lock off the Dorito side, but he didn't even see the FAU player bump across into the Dorito 1 and up to Dorito 2, ultimately ended up leaning out and shooting him in the face. You yeah. know, if you're going to make a move like that, you know, there's got to be something to play off of it. You know, like you either make a move to shoot two guys or you make a move to set somebody else up to shoot two guys. Yeah, and that's the thing is that when we're talking about that, you have to spread the field out. Once When you get those down on bodies, you don't want to be two guys like this because if the other team spread out, now you're stuck. Then you have to fight to get back out into position. So it was a very close first point, though. I'm, I'm really interested to see when as these two teams battle because the winner of this, uh, of this game goes to play the Florida Gators. And I can guarantee you that Florida Atlantic, FAU, they definitely want to be able to go play the other Florida team here because the winner of that is going to move on. Oh, yeah, I've, I've talking to some locals around here, and the, that, uh, that rivalry, you know, between all these uh, Florida schools definitely matters out here. So, I mean, FAU, you know, Florida Gulf Coast was here. Mm -hmm. You know, you have uh, University of Florida. They had a tight one at the end of yesterday. You know, they're going to want to get a win here. I mean, everybody's playing for keeps. You know, this tournament's on. All right, here you go. There's FAU on your screen right now. Let's see the breakout. They double up the back center and streak out all the way to the 30-yard line. Torito in the yellow zone. Nice job. Look, no, oh, the referee's running over there. Anytime you see a referee sprint in like that, it's normally not a good thing. And yeah, he's going to come off. Lucky he didn't get a penalty. So FAU, Todd, losing two here off the break. Yes, but still in decent spots. Communicating. You can see them yelling at each other. Got another guy out to the snake side to help lock it off. Yeah, this is a shot right over Montalvo's back. Look at him try to pick up both players running to the same bunker. I don't know what Rutgers is thinking over there on the Dorito side. They're lucky. They're both alive. Their top hand portion of your screen in the yellow zone. Two players in the same bunker. One of them needs to get out of there. I was about to say, get out of there, man. What are you doing? Yeah, that's bad communication. You know, it happens sometimes, though. But 
Montalvo definitely had a chance to shoot both of those guys. He could have evened this game back up real quick. Rutgers moving down the field now in both of those Doritos and the Snake One. Seven minutes and four seconds left to play here in the first half, so tons of time. And Rutgers trying to get on the board here and even this game up. You're looking at Montalvo right there from FAU, Florida Atlantic University, and he's rolling his gun towards the snake side of the field. He's trying to shoot at that player in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. And now the, the, we're panning to the other side. That's Montalvo right there, locked into his gunfight. Looks like pretty good form. Yeah, Rutgers, they need to get moving up the field. You know, they have their player in that big Dorito too, but they have bodies on that side of the field and they have bodies in this game. They need to really start working as there he goes from the Dorito one into the 50. You don't want to run behind your player. You want to get your teammate, tell him to move. But regardless, he gets in there. The player in Dorito two gets shot, so they give one body back. FAU still in the Dorito one. Oh, look at this. Nice job. He tries to, FAU tries to get all the way out. I like when players do that. It, it is a risky move, but but he, it didn't work, but he also stayed alive. So sometimes you got to think out of the box, Todd. Yeah, I'm not sure how he didn't get chopped up by that 50 Dorito guy, but he's not paying attention. They should just be beaten down on the snake side right now, not what? allowing players to run from the corner to the snake 50. Yeah, I don't know why they allow. I can't believe that Rutgers allowed FAU to run all the way. I mean, that was just the longest run I've seen today. Talk about a big move, but... Oh, look at this. Now on the opposite side of the field, down the Dorito side, the action. And yeah, it looks like Rutgers was trying to run down the Dorito side, but he gets shot out. Now the referee is going to get in there, and it look, looks like FAU may have taken a shot on his side. And yeah, the Rutgers player bunkered from the 50 Dorito, bunkered out the Dorito one, getting Madrid out there. But I mean, now. Uh, a little bit of better field position in the 50 snake over here, FAU. Well, everyone's worried about him now. But now his boy's got the ball. The guy, the, the FAU player right behind him. Is, was that Montalvo? Right yes. behind him. He's the one that has to really watch over his guy. But it doesn't look like there's anyone on the Dorito side of the field for either team right now. No, Matty, and we were just talking about spacing. Rutgers has three bodies. You know, they could swing a guy back, that guy that's in the snake temple, he could swing back to the back center you know, and, and create a little bit more spacing and go down that Dorito side. They have the bodies to do it, but they're not recognizing it needs to be done. Coach isn't talking well, to the them. Look, there, there's no communication going on right now on Rutgers. Okay, there, now the guy with the ball, who's that? Lee. Lee. Yeah, so that's a good job. Lee realizes he needs to move over there. And he almost gets caught. Yeah, he definitely needs to go the, smart. By the same guy that he knows where that guy is. He knows that FAU is in the, the, in the blue zone, in the back temple. It's not excusable to get caught in by that same player you were just gunfighting on one side of the field. You run the other side of the field, almost get caught by him. Yeah, I think he almost got bounced too right there in that small little race bunker, trying to put pressure on the snake. He needs to be just pounding that snake right now. I think he took out one of his pods and threw it back to Lee before he took off. Yeah, but top hand portion of your screen. Lee has make, made that move all the way to the other side of the field. He's in the 50 yard line, Dorito. So both teams have players at the 50 yard line. FAU is in the snake and Rutgers now making a big move. Oh what my gosh. What are you doing? Did he run? Coming from no man's land, tries to bunker out the snake okay. side temple from the 50 Dorito. Paintball 101, do not run for 30 yards at a guy who's gunned up in his bunker staring at you. And oh my gosh. Rutgers is just throwing away a great opportunity for a point right here by some really bad mental mistakes as Vogel is stoked to hang that flag. And uh, number 37 coming off here for Rutgers. I mean, in that situation, the guy in the 50 Dorito over there, he drew the attention of Montalvo, okay? All he had to do was get Montalvo to look that way, and the guy in the snake could have came and traded out with the 50 snake. Yeah, let's check out this replay, Todd. All right, you're looking at Montalvo right there, and he's trying to get a shot on the two Rutgers players that both went to the same bunker, Todd, like you talked about miscommunication. Then our cameraman catches one as well, but he did get us that great shot. And then here is the end of that point as I think it was Vogel was getting that shot over the top of the snake, and you see them, they're pumping their hands, they're stoked, they're now going up. That was the longest, that was one of the longest points of the day. There's only th three minutes and 30 seconds left here in the first half. And yeah, super proud of himself. Vogel goes and well, hangs the Vogel, flag. Well, let's not start patting each other on the back yet. It's only two to zero. I mean, that well, yeah. Well, well first off, yeah. we've been we've been spouting off for a while on yeah. what we think. Let's uh, let's get Laura in the mix. Laura, what's going on down there? 
Guys, that was a particularly long point. Seemed like it was going on forever. And when the FAU guys got back in the pit, they looked at each other and said, we don't care how long this takes. A win is a win. And they say they want to continue this methodical play. They want to see what they can do. And, of course, capitalizing on some mistakes on the other side of the field uh, from Rutgers. But still, they don't care how long it takes. They just want to win. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, win the close points, we always say, right? Yeah. We and the, always say win the close points. And the great thing about sports is you only have to win by one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so. And the great I thing mean, about paintball is you only have to have one guy left alive to hang the flag. Exactly. I mean, we're, we're six and a half into this uh, first half over here. It's a 2-0 game. I think by, by this time in the vicious game, it was 8-0. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Rutgers still in this game, but, I mean, they're just making a lot of really bad mental mistakes right now. Yeah, you know, they need to pull it together. I don't know what Lee was thinking that last point. Just, you know, he had time left. He was just running. Uh, in, you can't. You don't run at a guy who's in a bunker, gunned up, shooting at you. You know, you have to smartly use. That's why these 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 bunkers are out here is to put you between you and paintballs, right? Yeah. Kyle Ledford tries to make a big move up to the snake side, gets torn to bits. You got Madrid up in that uh, yellow can on the drill side of the field, tucked in. Trying to keep it tight. Rutgers got bounced going out to that Dorito corner, but they still have five live bodies. Yeah, and you're looking at the Rutgers line, and Todd, what do, look at this line. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with this? There's five of them, but where are they? FAU? No, what we're looking at on the screen right now. Look, oh, where, okay. look where all these yeah. guys are. Okay, I'm looking down the field. Um, I mean, they're all in the back spots. They're camped out. They're shooting their guns. I mean, they have a body advantage again and um, now finally get up into that yellow section of the field. But, I mean, the, the yellow bunkers, you gotta, you gotta risk something, you know? You gotta play a little aggressive. If you're gonna just camp out in all the blue bunkers and shoot your guns, then, I mean, you're, you're, playing, you're playing not to lose. You know, at least uh, FAU was willing to take a little bit of a risk, get up the field, they lost the body, but, you know, came back under control. Now they're back up the field into the yellow section. Rutgers, I mean, they're still back there looking for kills from the back. I mean, this is where you need to, you know, recognize that you're up a body and trying to coordinate some sort of move. You know, you have extra firepower. Use that extra gun to put the two guys in and let your free man run, you know? Oh, look at this. FAU taking out the back corner bunker on the snake side of the field. Yeah, and it's FAU just, they look a little crisper right now, Todd. You know, they look a little bit more confident and oh, they lose player out of the off the Dorito side of the field of the yellow zone and now Rutgers is able to get into snake one. Yeah, he's in snake one talking to his coach, trying to see what's going on, Maddie. Like you were talking about with the Omaha guys, you gotta run with your head up. Yeah. You know, he just put his gun down, ran with his gun in the wrong hand and just dove straight in there. You know, coordinated moves, talking to each other, you know, keeping track of the bodies, knowing where people are. I mean at this point in the game, you need to understand how the field plays out, you know? I mean, it's just regular five-man paintball, yeah. you know? But how these fields are laid out, when you hear the bodies die from certain sections of the field, you have to instantly know what is opening up. You know, where the guys are that are left, what they could possibly do, you know, and make smart, quick decisions. Yeah, absolutely. You know, these guys are playing really reactive. I mean, down bodies, FAU is still kind of controlling the tempo of this game. Yeah, and they, oh. And FAU and Snake One just comes right up into a stream. And now it looks like Rutgers is in the gonna potentially be in the position to win this point. This would be a really big one for him, make this a one-point game. And Madrid still in that center in the yellow zone for FAU. He's trying to battle out of there. Go so runs through the center, but then it gets completely cut in half. See, I mean. The way that that FAU player came around that can on the snake side should have gotten torn to bits, but, I mean, these Rutgers guys, I mean, they're getting to their spots. Cody Goodman laid down in that snake. I mean, he should have blown, uh, actually, that might have been McBride. Well, you know? it was Cody Goodman in the center for Rutgers that I think shot Madrid on that run through. Madrid just trying to make something happen, I understand. He didn't realize that Rutgers had moved up that far of the field. He felt he was, well, there was only one body in front of him. But regardless, the point is going to go to Rutgers. Our score is now 2-1. to one, So we got ourselves a very close match with only five seconds left to go. So we will be going into the second half with the score 2-1. to one. Uh, They may start this point, but I think it might be physically impossible to run the length of the field in five seconds. Nah, they're going to run off the clock. You know, if, if it's under about 15 seconds, there's really not holding an opportunity. Yeah, what's the point, you know? All right, so yeah. we got Laura 
Laura, what's going on down there? Guys, I'm noticing that all teams today as we go along here are losing their voices more and more. And Maddie, I know this is something you struggle with a little bit, even just broadcasting, but how do you make that work as far as getting the communication going when you don't have a whole lot of a voice and you've got to make it count so that your guys out there on the field can hear you? Well, it's funny you ask that. And it, uh, <laughs> my buddy, Davey Williamson, uh, he, he's now married to his beautiful wife, Amanda, who was a cheerleader for San Diego State. And she actually told me, you have to yell like a cheerleader, which means you have to yell from your stomach, not from your throat. And, uh, and, and it's actually, you can learn to project your voice. Um, we don't actually do that up here. This is just more of like a time thing for us up here. But it, regardless, those guys down there can actually learn to preserve their voice by doing that. Anyway, we're going to be right back with the second half, half action here. Florida Atlantic, University Owls taking on Rutgers. I'm Maddie Marshall with Todd Martinez and Laura McKeeman. We'll be right back. Things to do with Empire Paintballs. You can paint a picture. You can paint a fence. You can paint your friend. But know that the paint will not remain, and Empire Paintball strives to reduce the impact of paintballs on the environment. Our RPS Advanced Formula Fill Materials are all listed on the GRAS, Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act list, and will not negatively affect drinking water, water table, or the field environment. Shoot the best and know that Empire Paintball works hard to protect our planet. When my child sees this, she's going to be like, what the <laughs> are you doing? <laughs> Trying to feed you, baby. Chop, please. <laughs> Chop, please. All right, we are back here. Rutgers taking on Florida Atlantic. And Florida Atlantic with a slight edge. The score, 2-1 to one here. Second half about to start. I'm Maddie Marshall with Todd Martinez and Laura McKeeman. And it's getting a little easy, Todd. Starting to get a little... Yeah, I actually had a little raindrop come down, hit me in the face here. It started to sprinkle for a couple seconds, but then uh, quickly let up. But 
I mean, the wind can play a factor. It's not too bad right now, but I mean, you see the clouds up above us are kind of humming. You know, we've seen a lot of them come in, you know, keeping it nice and cool out here. Nice and easy on our paintballs. As on the breakout, FAU goes hard to the Dorito side. Get two guys out to that side. We're going to try and work their way up. Rutgers gets one out to that Dorito side as well. Spreads the field out wide, makes both corners. All still in those blue bunkers. One guy up the field. Five on five right now. And little tiny bit better field position for FAU. Slightly. Yeah. Oh, and then Rutgers goes and blows that call by sliding into snake one. And he's clean. Yeah, FAU is just waiting to launch up into those Doritos. They're the first ones in there. Bumps on into that Dorito one. Starts looking across the field as the player for Rutgers gets shot in the arm from somewhere on the snake side. So he's going to be the first body down. This is going to be the first time we're going to see FAU playing with the advantage. Now with three guns focused on that Dorito side of the field on the one player. And these guys are pretty evenly matched. These teams are evenly matched because we're seeing really slow points. And But these guys are making moves. Not right this second. They're kind of locked in. But I hope we don't get ourselves in, a in one of those matches where no one wants to make a move because they don't want to be the guy that messes up. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're both playing the, uh, the super patient game, you know. But, I mean, you always have to have a little bit of aggression to go with that. You know, you have to have the right guys in the right spots shooting lanes to keep the other team at bay. But, I mean, you got to attack from somewhere. And FAU, I think they're the ones that are a little bit more brave and uh, ready and willing to make those moves. And we see, I think that's Madrid over there blowing up the big Dorito. Starting the edge towards that red zone. We got a great shot here on your screen of Goodman rolling his gun towards that snake side of the field. He's trying to shoot the back bunker for FAU, who wants to make a move. That's Vogel. Lee dies out of the snake for Rutgers. Now three bodies left alive on that side of the field. And Madrid getting in, getting set. Yep. And going to, going to war with the uh, snake side temple for Rutgers. Really slow point, man. I'm telling you, he's guys are probably going to hopefully not be in one of those situations where they run out of paint. That's probably my biggest pet peeve ever watching paintball is when guys run out of paint. Yeah, I mean, oh. if you know you're playing long, slow points, then you want to throw at least a couple more pods on your back. Yeah, exactly. So Vogel getting taken out, tries to dive in there, gets yelled at by his coach. I don't know where he, where did he get shot. He got shot, shot in the back of the foot as he dove in. He tried to go over the top instead of down low. He tried he got to shot in the back of the leg. Super cool Superman dive over the top of the bunker instead of just, hey, just get in the bunker, man. Hey man, I'm on TV, dog. I got to keep it fresh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm Vogel, baby. I got this biker hat on. I got a biker hat on. I got a name like Vogel that just comes off the tongue so fluidly. My grandmama watching me on the Zenith. I got home. this crazy spiky t tank cover, <laughs> magenta spiky tank cover and some glasses. I'm going to be the dude known for the biker hat and the spiky magenta tank cover. Watch. <laughs> I'll be on Fox Sports. Laura McKeeman gonna call me and be like, oh, you're that dude. And he's gonna be like, I'm that dude. <laughs> As we see Madrid dive into the 50 Dorito, getting up the field, slowly working his way. Wreckers. So Wreckers needs to, they're just basically hiding at this point and getting shot. And yeah. his back bunkers and then yeah, not, not much that they could do here as uh, FAU was able to get in position, even though Vogel got shot out. Montalvo handling business over here on the snake side of the field. The one player for Rutgers that actually moved out of the bunker he ran to on the break got shot, and everybody else just died out of their original spots. So FAU, I mean, very, very slowly imposing their will. Yeah, let's, yeah they are definitely very, very, very slowly imposing their will. Look at Vogel. He's going to come around there and then dive right over the top. Looks actually Boom. real smooth, but he got shot. Now, now, Todd, if he had not done the superstar dive over the top of that and be like three feet high on this dive, even though it looked really cool, if he had just done the, I'm going to actually have my lenses gliding. The referee's like, hey, bro, you're not that cool. Yeah. Come over here. Come, come with me. So here's Goodman from Rutgers, who I... I don't think he got shot there. He's hiding in, and then here comes the stream of paint in, and bam. Boom. Did that Take bounce off one. the ground? It did. Yeah. 
But, uh, yeah, I mean, good job by the referees, too. You know what's funny is how many times you have a guy, and this is happened, this has happened to me at least a couple times in my career, where somebody was like, no, the paintball bounced off the ground. I saw it. And we're just like, yeah, whatever, bro. You got shot, and you lost your gunfight, man. You yeah, know? Right, no, man. I swear, it bounced off the ground. That was proof. It actually does happen. <laughs> all right, we got Laura downstairs. Laura, what's going on? Going you on, saw girl? Vogel get yelled at by his coach there for FAU after his move up the snake and then getting shot. And he said this is twice that it's happened. The coach not happy with Vogel. But Vogel's rebuttal was, hey, if only I was three inches shorter. And, yeah, I mean, I guess his foot wouldn't have got caught then. What do you guys think? <laughs> I think that's a pretty pinner excuse, you know? <laughs> I mean, you got shot in the bottom of the foot. If you'd have dove low on the ground, if you'd only dove three feet shorter, then uh, you might have made it. So the score is now three to one with six minutes and 26 seconds left to play in this game. We're here in the second half. It's five on five right now. As we see Rutgers players fighting furiously. Similar breakout to last game. Except now they're in that tall temple on the Dorito side. Maybe they'll now get a better chance to launch out of there. All five guys alive on both sides of the field. We got Vogel again. Going to be the first guy on this snake side. Only came out to the short temple on the inside. Lee back in that snake for Rutgers. Rutgers fighting with their two guys on the Dorito side. Trying to create the separation. Every single player on Rutgers, except for that tall temple, is looking towards the snake side. Good yeah. move by Rutgers to get in there right before the switch. Oh, and the Madrid sliding up into that center. So they've got a good, the, uh, FAU has good field position in the center of the field. Madrid gun up on the snake. He has a really good shot on snake one. You can see that angle, lower left-hand portion of your screen. To the right-hand portion of your screen, this is Madrid over here in the yellow. And then he's able to get an angle. This is the angle he's got. You can see that big open gap there on the left-hand portion of your screen, right by the red bunker. And that's basically where those the flood of paintballs is going to come from Madrid. So Lee here in the snake for Rutgers really needs to avoid coming up. And you know, you see Lee, he's poking over the top of that. He's trying to get the drop on Madrid, and Madrid needs to just keep sending paintballs over the top of that bunker to try to poke out Lee. I think Montalvo might be walking off the field right now for FAU. You know, I really don't like Madrid in these hold spots. You know, I like when he gets out wide and starts attacking down the field. He's the one guy for FAU that stands out because he's constantly moving. You know, he's always looking to get better shots, get up the field, but... I mean, he gets stuck in these hold spots, and, you know, FAU doesn't get any productivity out of him. Yeah, now he gets shot, Todd. And, and that's what happens a lot of times is you have one of your better guys, and you need him to do an important job, like go to the center and lock down the lane. But the thing is is that they need aggressive moves happening. Look at Vogel is in snake one. Vogel playing that snake one a bit awkwardly. <laughs> trying to get some shots on the Dorito side where Rutgers is coming down the field right now. Vogel. That's a big point for Rutgers. I mean, they, we got, they need this. We got less than four minutes left in this, in this match. Yeah. Rutgers can't throw this one away, but at the same time, they're in the 50 Dorito, Dorito one. And they have three guns over well, here. It's five on two right now. So say, somebody drop the hammer, man. Drop yes. the hammer. Please. There hey, you go. Hey, nice Vogel. Job, Paolo. Hey, Vogel, that's what you get for talking back to your coach, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> so Paolo comes and finally, number 72 for Rutgers. Drops the hammer on number three, Vogel, for FAU. And Rutgers is going to make this a one-point match with three minutes and 23 seconds left to go. Very dominant point for them. Very dominant point. It's a way to stay in this game for Rutgers. Yeah, let's check out this final kill here. Hammer getting dropped. This has got to happen in situations like this. Dude, if there's one guy left alive and you need to make a statement to the other team, you need to do something just like this. I would have ran the highway on him, though. Yeah, highway is the inside part of the snake. Anytime you hear us say, I oh, just running the highway, the reason why we call it that is because just like this guy did, you're going you know, basically top speed. Yeah, so, and a good job, uh, like we were talking about, using that yellow pin right in front of the snake to run directly at him, you know, and not expose his body. He didn't shoot his gun until he got there. So good job by the Rutgers player finally making that move. Bunkers out Vogel. You know, I mean, you got to give it to Vogel, though. I mean, if that bunker was like three feet taller, that guy wouldn't have been able to come over the top and bunker him. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
You know what I'm saying? You heard me? Yes, you heard me. All right, so this is our score, two to three, with only three minutes and 14 seconds left. And I want to say it's anyone's point. I mean, the Rutgers stealing that momentum back there. They definitely can put points on Florida Atlantic. Yeah, we've also been playing for 17 minutes, and we're in a 3-2 ball game over here. I mean, it's close, you know, but Rutgers, they're not going to be able to play another five-minute point. You know, we got 3:14 on the clock. They're not going to be able to go to all those blue bunkers and sit and wait for FAU to make mistakes, you know. They're going to have to get up the side of the field eventually. Yeah, they, they really need to focus on that. And it, But that's a game plan. That's a mentality issue. It's not a game plan issue. Of course it's a game plan issue, but with, with you have to be able to adjust to the pace of the game. And you, you, you can't just keep showing the same looks and play the same way. That's kind of amateur hour. You know, you want to try to be elevating your game. And in a situation like this, they really need to put some in the air losing. All that Florida Atlantic needs to do is just carry an extra pot of paint out, go to those spots, roll their guns. And I wouldn't necessarily have that be be all the back all the back spots because they've been able to get into some of the in those those uh, they've been able to, to get they've been able to get into some of those spots. Uh, that have been a little bit more fundamental. Now we're talking about that yellow zone and that red zone. So when you have three minutes and 14 seconds left, just about, the situation is you don't necessarily take all those blue bunkers and just roll your guns. Now, yes, you can do that. Depends on how good your team is at doing that, but it's almost better to get up the field a little bit and then lock it down. Yeah, I mean, the shots just get better. You know, the shots get better and better. And if they put a little bit of pressure on Rutgers, Rutgers has shown that they're not going to go anywhere. You know, Rutgers needs to realize, hey, we're getting to our spots alive. They're not shooting us, but we got 314. We need to make something happen, but we also can't give away any free points right now, too, because they don't want to go down 4-2 and end up trying to have to fight back with about, you know, probably a minute, minute and a half, something like that. So, I mean, if they can win one point and force overtime, you know, that's your worst-case scenario. But they're going to have to get this point, and they're going to have to go down the field to get it. I don't think FAU is just going to you know, roll over on them at this point. No, I don't think so, too. And a lot of things, a lot of times in this particular moment, it comes down to how many guys get shot off the break. Uh, and so we'll see. Let's, we're going to watch the break in a few seconds. But first, Laura, what do you got for us? Guys, they only have three minutes and 14 seconds on the clock, and Rutgers in their pit just making each other aware of it, saying we know that we've had some long points throughout this match. We want to make sure that we keep it in perspective that time is of the essence right now. Yeah, time, time is not the friend of Rutgers right now, obviously because they're losing, but it is only one point. I would really try to focus on hopefully they can get a couple couple of those kills off that break and then potentially get a fast point to tie it up and then give themselves a little bit more time to work with in order to try to get that winning point. But it's it's going to be tough regardless because these these points have been so slow. Yeah, I see uh, I see the old boy Ole Madrid down there on the inside. I don't know. We're going to see if we can get out to the outside try and get down the field. Vogel breaks out to the corner. And he gets wide, but he takes one in the face. Ooh, could have been huge for Rutgers. Bounces Vogel in the face oh, so on the break. But here comes Lee again, doing a good job. Third time we've seen him in the snake over here. Now yeah. if only he can get something out of it. If Vogel would have walked out, Lee could have gone straight to the 50 and had a field day. But now he's looking at the back center, bearing down on him. Rutgers loses a player off the Dorito side. So Rutgers trying to push up the Dorito side as they lost a, a body. But if you look at that cross field spread right now on your screen for Rutgers, and then now on the flip side, you're looking at FAU. That's FAU's in those lock spots. They're in that you know, little short race bunker on the snake side of the field, locking down the Doritos. You got Ole Madrid in the uh, small little blue cube. Also locking down the Dorito side, and FAU gets a player in the Dorito one. Yeah, they're finally making those moves we talked about. This is what I was just talking about. These moves that they're making, they're putting themselves in slightly better field position, so it's easier to lock down the field. You're looking at Ledford right now, who's trying to lock down that Dorito side, but they don't. Uh, it doesn't look like Rutgers has much going on over there. Oh, but FAU losing their front player on the Dorito side of the field. Yeah, good job by Lee to get up over the top, working with his coach, and shoot out that Dorito one. Still four bodies left alive for FAU as 145 hits the clock. Lee looking to make something happen, really just kind of getting support, keeping Vogel at bay. We have Cody Goodman keeping Vogel in that corner. Don't want to let him get up and get down the field. Lee looks like he doesn't know what he 
he, he looked a little, I wouldn't say timid, but a little like confused. There's a minute and 24 seconds left. There shouldn't be much confusion. Yeah, I was gonna say, you need to get up the field. But you gotta work with your guy. You have two back players. See, the thing is, is Lee has two back guys. This is why communication is so important. Your coach is right beside you. You have two back players right behind him. You can't just giddy up and go by yourself. There's three other potential fundamental parts to the plan over here that need to weave in together. Vogel takes another bouncer off of his gun, looks at the referee, calls it clean, but then comes right back up into another paintball and gets his wig peeled off. Wow, he was just right on, the, right on the edge there until it finally came upon him. But we're running out of time, man. Running out of time, 44 seconds left to go here. And all FAU has to do is just stop the aggressive push of Rutgers and they will be advancing on. Well, they, they've got the body advantage on the snake side. It's gotta come from here. You know, there's two bodies on the Dorito side for FAU. They're gonna have to get up the field. Number three, Cody Goodman needs to get in up here and help his teammate. The middle of the field is open, and it's time to go with yeah. 20 seconds left. This is it, right? It's time to launch, kid. You need to go for it. There he goes. He launches, and it looks like he's gonna... Now go down oh. the snake. Now, now go down. Now stand up and go. You gotta go. What is he hiding from? You have six seconds. You're going to lose. No, uh, the uh, coach is, and the Shalian. coach needs to tell him, so they blow it. There's just not enough time. Rutgers had the move. The move was made. I, I can't remember who was it. Shalian. Yeah. Goodman made the move to open the door, but Shalian didn't run through it when it was sitting there swinging like swinging this. Swinging open. It was swinging wide open. <laughs> Cody Cowboys, Goodman. Old school cowboy saloon style, swinging open. All yeah, you have to do is walk right through it. Come on in and shoot all the bad guys, but unable to get it together. <sighs> So frustrating. I mean, so good job, FAU. Let's check out the replay here. And that you're looking at the pl snake player. Is it? Sh yeah, it Shalon. Lee. Yeah. This is the first guy. This is Lee. Okay, Lee getting in there. And this, th this was he went by himself. And this is the thing. There was two back players behind him and a coach right there. And he still somehow couldn't get the timing to get that to make that move. So unfortunate for them, but. You know, great job by FAU, man, to just narrowly hold on. I like that move by Goodman, but it was a little bit too little too late, unfortunately, for Rutgers. Yeah, and we definitely have to give it to FAU doing a good job. You know, they were determined. They knew how this game was being played out, and they were smart. You know, they caught some lucky breaks, you know, but they played the field a little bit better than Rutgers did today. Rutgers was in there. They were alive, you know, but they were playing hide, you know, hide-and-seek ball. Yeah, you know, what a low-scoring game, 3-2? to two? Yeah. Three I mean, two and 20 minutes of paintball? Hey, a dub's a dub. What were you saying, Laura? You only have to win by one? That's right. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. I mean, that's what they kept saying. We got to work these points. We got to get through them. It doesn't matter how long they last. We just got to win. Yep, and they did. They used that to their advantage. Yeah, and so they, they will be moving on. Yeah, they will be moving on to play the University of Florida Gators. So it's going to be a Florida versus Florida throwdown here this afternoon right around 4.30 as the University of Florida Gators will be taking on Florida Atlantic University Owls. Next up, though, uh, we have the University of Maryland going to be taking on Cal State University. That should be an interesting matchup as Cal State University Long Beach is one of the favorites here, and I'm interested to see what Maryland's going to be able to bring to the table to try to take those, you know, try to take those guys down. All right, so we have Laura down oh, in the pits. Laura, what's going on? What hey, got down well, there? I've got Travis Madrid here, and his team wants me to ask you, does your back hurt from carrying the team? That's not even close to what's happening right now. That's not, not, who told you I that? agree with you. <laughs> no, everybody's doing really good, so I'm excited. We didn't do so well yesterday, but today's a new day, so we're excited that we got in and we're playing. Okay, this one, a very close game the entire time, but you guys are able to pull it out. Do you feel like you got some better field position there toward the end? Um, toward the end, yeah. Well, we figured out when they were beating us, we were too far up the center, and we didn't. They had more. They were wider than us. So, the next few games, we started uh, just going wider and getting the angles on them to try. And in the last game, we just all we knew, we just had to hold it out. So, <laughs> that's what we did. Hey, so a Florida battle coming up. You face oh, yeah. the Gators. What have you seen from them, and do you think you guys can beat them? Um, well, yeah, I think I think anything has happened. We're, we always practice against each other. I mean, not we don't practice against each other, but we always end up playing. We played in the World Cup. Yeah. They got the upper hand that event. So we want it back. You yeah, got some revenge. Yeah, we want some revenge this event. <laughs> All right, Travis, congratulations. Thank you. All right, guys, back up to you. Yeah, I like that guy. You know what I mean? He's out there. He is working his butt off. He is everywhere on the field. We saw him kind of the snake side. He's going down the Dorito side. Yeah, you know? and, and look at this. This was that last play. Oh, kid, just taking it. So I'll tell you what.
We got more paintball coming at you this afternoon as Florida Atlantic beat Rutgers 3-2. to two. We got potentially favorites here at this event, Cal State University Long Beach. They're going to be thrown down against Maryland here in the afternoon's competition. I'm Maddie Marshall with Todd Martinez and Lauren McKeeman. We got Chris Lasoy and Kathy Sarsilla coming up next in just an hour. So please hit us back as soon as you possibly can. One hour, we're going to be back here at Paintball Action. See you later.